Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This is verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, chapter 19, verse number 5. And I'll read the verse in Sanskrit and then translation. Yatatvam kripaya bhutyaham tejasamahimaljasam justa ista gunasarvais Tato Sri Bhagavan Prabhu. Mm. O oh my Lord, because you are endowed with causeless mercy, all opulences, all prowess, and all glory, strength, and transcendental qualities, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Master of everyone. So this is spoken by Kishapa. I'll read the purport. I'll read the verse again. O oh my Lord, please repeat, O oh my Lord, because you are endowed with causeless mercy, all opulences, all prowess, and all glories, strength, and transcendental qualities. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Master of Everyone. <laughs> In this verse, the word Tato Sri Bhagavan Prabhu mean, therefore you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Master of Everyone. Jai Jagannath Baladeya Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is endowed with all six opulences in full. And moreover, he is extremely kind to his devotee. So note that point. He is extremely kind to his devotee. Although he is full in himself, he nonetheless wants all living entities to surrender unto him so they may engage in his service. Thus he becomes satisfied. Although he is full in himself, he nonetheless becomes pleased when his devotees offer him patram pushpam phalam toyam, a leaf, flower, fruit, or water in devotion. Sometimes the Lord, as the child of his mother Yasoda, requests his devotee for some food, as if he were very hungry. Sometimes he tells the devotee in a dream that his temple and his garden are now very old and that he cannot enjoy them very nicely. Mm, get a new temple. Yeah. Mm. That's on the, that's on the uh, future program. Mm. Mm. Thus, he requests the devotee to repair them. Sometimes he is buried in the earth as if unable to come out himself. He requests his devotee to rescue him. Sometimes he requests his devotees to preach his glories all over the world although he is alone, quite competent to perform the task. Even though the Supreme Personality of Godhead is endowed with all possessions and is self-sufficient, he depends on his devotees. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the relationship of the Lord with his devotees is extremely confidential. Only the devotee can perceive how the Lord although full in himself, depends on his devotee for some particular work. This is explained in the Gita, wherein the Lord tells Arjun, Nimitya matram bhavam savasachin. O Arjun, merely be an instrument in the fight. Lord Krishna had the competence to win the battle of Kurukshetra, but nonetheless he induced his devotee Arjun to fight and become the cause of victory. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was quite competent enough to spread his name and mission all over the world, but still he depended upon his devotees to do the work. 
Considering all these points, the most important aspect of the Supreme Lord's self-sufficiency is that he depends on his devotees. This is cause his causeless mercy. The devotee who is, has perceived this causeless mercy of the Lord, of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by realization, can understand the position of master and the servant. Ramam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Sunya Vahari Pasyatya De Satarine Vancha Kaupa Thru Vizja Kripa Sindhu Pe Vajja Patita Nama Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this verse kind of illustrates something very significant and very confidential appears that we are working very hard and we're making plans to serve the Lord in different ways and we're struggling and we're doing so many activities in some even in our personal life and in our devotional activities but actually we don't do anything it just looks like it all we have is one thing desire and the quality and the nature of our desire attracts the energy of the Lord in such a way that it helps to act in such a way that we can have whatever we need to fulfill that desire but it's desire that's the foundation of our independence from the Lord only that everything else is done by the Lord through his energy, the material energy, and through his superior energy, parabhakta, the superior energy. So when we desire something material, we desire in one of three categories, the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance. If we like to sleep and waste time, we attract the mode of ignorance. If we like to work hard and make a lot of money, we attract the mode of passion. And if we like to hear poetry, art, and music, and discuss philosophy, we attract the mode of goodness. So by the nature of our desire, that energy comes and helps to supply the ingredients that we need to help fulfill our desire to act in that way. But when we want to serve the Lord, then another energy takes place or, or supersedes the material energy and that's the spiritual energy and that's Krishna's internal energy which is bhakti so and even the activities we perform in the relationship to Krishna bhakti yoga or devotional service he gives the intelligence he gives the ingredients he gives the facility and most important he gives the result this is Krishna. And he says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasyajaham Vridhisani Visto, but that's Mirtir Gyanam Apohanam Cha. If you want remembrance, you want to remember me, I help you. If you want to forget me, I help you, I help you in that way also. And if you want knowledge about me, then that also comes from me. So there is two kinds of causes. There is the apparent cause and the remote cause. And Krishna is the remote cause. <laughs> you can't see him. <laughs> and sometimes you can't even perceive how he does things. But still, behind all of his energies, he's moving those energies. Parasya shakti virahaya suyate svabhaviki jnana bala kriya cha. He simply tries to fulfill our desires by desiring in a certain way and then these energies help to make things work and they work perfectly under his control. 
we read in this purport, <coughs> it's interesting, it says that uh, if Krishna wants, he can spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. He can do it. He doesn't need us. <laughs> but he wants us because he wants to give us the credit. And giving us the credit means we get purified. And getting purified is what he wants us to, to do in order for us to develop that relationship with him. So you'll see in that one statement, and they asked Srila Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada, you know, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in India and he was preaching all over the Indian subcontinent. He traveled all the way from Jagannath Puri down to the eastern side, all the way down to Cape Cormoran, back up. When, when he got to Mumbai, he crossed over and went back to Jagannath Puri. Took him six years and he made millions of people Krishna conscious by spreading the Harinam Sankirtan. And there's, uh, there's at least 29 places where they have established Lord Chaitanya's footprint. So practically when he was there, he made the whole area of India Krishna conscious. So the question came to Prabhupada, well, well you know, why did he stop there? Why not continue and just make the whole world Krishna conscious? And Prabhupada said he left it for me to do. <laughs> and us. <laughs> so this is our, this is how Krishna works. He's fully competent, as this verse says, and fully empowered to do everything and any, anything. But he puts himself under the care of his devotees. And he depends on his devotees. And he gives everything the devotee needs to carry out their service and to awaken the knowledge they need so they can come to him in devotion. This is Krishna. We can't see it, but it's happening. <laughs> uh, sometimes you can see it. Just like, not this year, but last year in Jagannath Rathayatra in Jagannath Puri, there was a huge rainstorm. And this one, the carts, they had the three carts, Baladev, Subhadra, Jagannath, and they had reached the end of the Rath, right in front of the Gundicha temple. From the Jagannath temple, 2.3 kilometers down the road, chanting, dancing, the, the deities had reached. And then they parked the carts there. And then there's nice ceremonies honoring the Lord, people come up, they get a chance to get blessings, they get, they get hit on the head by the Pujaris, I don't know if you've been there, but it's, it's auspicious to get in, hit on the head. Because <laughs> Jagannath is encouraging them to do that, to give us special blessings. <laughs> so, and uh, so there was a huge, I mean, you can see it, it's on film, a huge torrential rainstorm, except around Jagannath's car. It was completely dry. Everywhere, Subhadra's cart, Balaram's cart, and all around the area, it's pouring rain. Pouring rain. Except on Jagannath's cart, it's completely dry all around the area there. So Jagannath did that. <laughs> so he can do that. So sometimes you see how he works behind the scenes and he makes things quite obvious how he does things. Like sometimes you do something, you say, wow, how did I do that? That was so hard. Well, you had the right mood. <laughs> because you had the right mood and you made the effort, the Lord empowered you. <laughs> and then he, he does everything like that. So we should always remember that. And why is it so important? Because that, that helps us to establish our relationship with the Lord. That to always depend on the Lord and always to pray for His mercy. Even in our ordinary activities in maintaining our life in the world, that, that's not separate from our devotional activities because as a devotee, everything we do is connected to the Lord, either directly or in parallel to that direct, which we call it indirect or less direct, but still, it's connected to the Lord. So that's His mercy. So he does, 
And even when he was here, he illustrated that as one beautiful pastime. When Krishna came to Dwarka, and he had a meeting with some of the elders in Dwarka, and Yudhisthira Maharaj was there, and the, the war had just completed. The, the Pandavas were victorious. Yudhisthira was now about to go on to the throne. But before he could do that, they had to perform the Rajasuya sacrifice, which would consummate or actually make it official that Yudhisthira was actually the king of the world. And it's a big ceremony. It takes two years to do. It takes millions and millions and millions of euros, dollars, marks. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of money. And so Krishna's there, and now they're, uh, they're planning. So while he's in the meeting, he's presiding, Krishna, and his uh, assistant, uh, Uddhava, which is also his dear devotee and is also, he's a cousin of Krishna because Uddhava's father is, Vasud is Vasudev's brother. So Vasudev's brother and his father, uh, Vasudev and his brother are brothers and Krishna is the son of one and Uddhava is the son of another, so they're cousins. And so, uh, the meeting is going on, and then a messenger comes to the door, and he's quite distraught. He's in a, a very anxious, and he has a, a message. He's stopped by the guard at the door, and the guard checks him out, checks him out to see what he's here for. He reads the message, then he alerts Krishna. He says, Krishna, there's a messenger here, and it seems like there's a very important message. So Krishna said, all right, have him read the message. So he read the message, and it was from the kings who were imprisoned by Jarasandha. There were 16,000 kings who had been caught by Jarasandha and put in prison. And Jarasandha was planning to do a big human sacrifice to the goddess Chandi. So they were all going to be, you know, finished in this sacrifice. So now they're praying to the Lord, my dear Lord, save us. We are about to be sacrificed by this demon, Jarasandha. He's very powerful and there's nothing we can do. Only you can save us. So it's a very heartfelt and a very desperate message. And so Krishna is listening to it. And then there's a, co there's a problem because the, the Rajasuya sacrifice has to go on. The time for that was about to begin and that's what they were planning, how, when to begin it. And now this comes up and Krishna has to do both. He's the guest of honor. So everybody's wondering well, what's Krishna going to do? And so he looks at Uddhava, his cousin brother, or devotee, says, Uddhava, what should we do? <laughs> And there's an assembly of all of the exalted people in, in Dwarka, you know. Many of Krishna's family members, many of the soldiers in the Yadda dynasty, King Yudhisthira, it's a very you know, auspicious, very august assembly, very powerful. And so Krishna diverts the decision to Uddhava. And Uddhava has to figure it out. And Uddhava, he thinks for a little while. Now the point is, Krishna knows what to do, obviously, because he's God. <laughs> and he can do two things at once, or he can somehow adjust things to make it seem like it's quite easy decision. So in this case, he says to Uddhava, what should we do? And Uddhava says, my dear Lord, the Rajasuya sacrifice will not be successful as long as Jarasandha is still living. 
Well, the first business is to kill Jarasandha. <laughs> and everyone says, Jai Uddhava, that was a brilliant decision. <laughs> All glories to Uddhava. Wow, he came up with the perfect answer. Krishna is smiling. And so what Krishna wanted to do is he wanted to give Uddhava the credit. He, make, he Krishna knew what to do, there was no question about that. But he simply diverted to his devotee so his devotee would get all the honors. So that's how Krishna consciousness works. <laughs> that's how Krishna consciousness works. What can we do? We can simply try. And we can also pray. Both pray, praying and trying brings about the mercy of the Lord. But as soon as we make our efforts in that direction, everything happens. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Arasoham apsakuntaya prabhasmi sasi surya pranava sarva vedishu sabdike purusham dishu. The last line, purush, sudu, purush, uh, sabdike purusham dishu, is the most important part of that line. And Krishna is speaking, he says, I'm the light of the sun and the moon, I'm the taste of water, I'm the syllable om in the Vedic mantras. I am the, uh, so many things, he says. In the last line, he says, I am the ability in all living entities. So he ultimately is the, the feature of success in everything we do, simply depending on Krishna. Well, sometimes we say, well, I depended on Krishna. I worked so hard and it didn't come out the way I wanted to. That means it came out the way he wanted it. <laughs> because there's always that element that w if we think we're perfect and our idea of what is the result, not necessarily will be the best result. Because we, we see that sometimes. We don't know what to do. We make a decision. And sometimes Krishna allows us to make a mistake so we can learn from the mistake. But when you depend on Him, and Prabhupada said that, said that, he said, if you never if you will never, this is the exact quote, you will never be blocked, impeded, he uses the word impeded, in your spiritual practice if you remember the lotus feet of the Lord. That's dependent, that is the principle of all success in devotional service. And of course we hear that Krishna says, you know, always remember me. Satatam kirtayan toman, always glorify me by always keeping our consciousness on Krishna, you might say, well, that's not so easy. It's not. <laughs> but if you practice, it becomes easy. And if you pray to Krishna, my dear Lord, I keep forgetting you. Let me remember you. Give me the understanding by which I can remember you. And sometimes Krishna sees that he has to do something in your life to wake you up and you might be a little bit different than what you expect. <laughs> it's just like, you know, he puts you in a circumstance that there's no other choice but him. <laughs> like I preach in jails. This is one of my major, this is my focus mostly in, in the UK and also in, uh, in the United States. And we find that many of the persons, not many, but some, many of the persons we preach to, they're thankful they, they went to jail because it would have never came to Krishna consciousness if they didn't. They, they said, because I'm in this position, I met the devotees, because I met the devotees, now I'm, I, I can practice Krishna consciousness, they're happy. They feel like their life is now has meaning again. Yeah. So, you know, circumstances don't usually illustrate what is success or failure. How we accept it is what, me, what is success or failure. And accepting everything as the mercy of the Lord. But still, we have to try and we have to remember Krishna. <laughs> Nothing happens by chance. Like Prabhupada was talking about this point that 
this word chance is a word you should take it out and throw it. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. Chance means I don't know. So one devotee was saying to Prabhupada, yeah, if no nothing happens by chance. He said, I was in the shower this morning and the shower piece broke from the top and hit me in the head. Chance. Prabhupada said, no, because you're a rascal. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> so, nothing happens by chance. <laughs> but it appears to be like that. There's two words you can throw out. Instinct and chance. <laughs> Those two words don't. Something that the scientists have somehow devised as a way to explain the unexplained unexplainable. But we know that the unexplainable is understanding that behind the scenes the Lord is allowing, he does two things. He wants things to happen and he allows things to happen. So sometimes he doesn't interfere with the situation, he allows things to happen so the devotee gets some kind of understanding, some message, some lesson learned, some uh, opportunity to call out to Krishna and depend on Krishna more. So that's Krishna. He is the ingredient, he is the activity, he is the result, he is ultimately everything. And he comes in his deity form, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Sisi Gornitai, in such a beautiful way to open our hearts simply by seeing the, these beautiful manifestations of the Lord and he gives us a chance to serve. He doesn't need nothing. He simply serves. Just like there was this story in uh, uh, a little incident in our temple in, uh, in near the Mayapur area. It's, there's a Jagannath Didi there. It's in Raipur, I think it's called. There are Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Didis and devotees and ISKCON have somehow taken over that, that worship. Now these deities are beautiful. They're really powerful Jagannath deities. The deities' arms, maybe you've seen them, the arms are so long. So one devotee was dressing the deity one time. He was dressing Jagannath. He put on one necklace, put on the second necklace, put on the third necklace, and then he got a, a fourth one, and he put it on, but it fell off. So he picked it up, and he put it on again, and again it fell off. He's thinking, what is this? Can't understand why it's falling off. And then he was about to put it on the third time, and he hears a voice, don't you know, I don't want that one. <laughs> Krishna said, and I'm, I'm, you know, you gave me enough, I let him just stop there. <laughs> so, so behind, sometimes he reveals that he's actually in control. But most of the time he lets us think we're in control. <laughs> and that way we will try hard. Because if you think that God does everything, you might think, why should I do anything? Let him do it all. <laughs> When Prabhupada said, uh, he told Arjuna, you got to fight, but it's not your fighting that's going to win. He said, he said, ultimately, uh, you're simply my instrument. And uh, because I want the, the, you, the brothers, to win the war and establish righteousness and dharma in the world, then I have chosen you as the, my, my uh, instruments. So that's how Krishna works. He works through his devotees and he gets whatever he wants. So Lord Chaitanya's plan is to spread Krishna consciousness around the world. So we can make it fast or we can make it slow, but it will happen. The more we take uh, the opportunity to take part in this mission by worshiping the Lord nicely, associating with devotees in the, in the mood of serving devotees, and, again, glorifying the holy name, that's the most important as you were in introducing in your 
presentation that the chanting of the holy name is Golokya Premadan Harinam Sankirtan. That that chanting of the holy name is coming directly from the spiritual world. It's not part of this world. Now, if we become enthusiastic and use our time, as much time as we can, in fact, I would say all your time, <laughs> for Krishna's service, then this will, this movement will spread fast. Otherwise, it'll it'll go it'll go on, but it'll be slower because the Lord has to get keep empowering others who want to take part in it. So everything he does is by empowerment. He empowers his devotees to do. When he sees the devotee is trying hard, he gives them empowerment. The devotee does wonderful things. The devotee gets all of the credit, and Krishna is happy. He wants to give the credit. He wants to give the glory to his devotee. That says, and then that's, the, that's his special, that is his kindness. Just like if you know someone in this world who's rich, famous, and has a lot of influence, a lot of material resources, but they're not kind. Who cares? All of these other things have no meaning because the person is not kind or cruel or, you know, self, ego, ego maniac. But Krishna has everything. He's all powerful. But he is, as it says in this verse, the most important quality is he's kind. And that kindness is that he allows his devotee to do everything he, and to think, and to, but at the same time he empowers the devotees and gives the devotee all of the credit. That's Krishna. And he likes to see his devotee get credit, although he does it. <laughs> That's Krishna. So there's nobody better to worship than Krishna. And when Krishna comes in the form of Jagannath, he is especially merciful. <laughs> He's very personal, just like we had the Ratha Yatri yesterday. He, he comes out of his temple just to give his mercy, his darshan, to the conditioned souls who would never, many of them would never come into a temple or even think about it. And if they see, if they just see the Lord riding on his wrath cart, they're guaranteed another uh, human birth in the next life, just by seeing that. So that's his mercy. So out of all the qualities of the Lord, he is most kind and most merciful. That's the most outstanding quality, especially with Jagannath. <laughs> very personal. Very, very personal. Mm. Okay, I think I ran out of time. I went over a little bit. Any questions? Comments? Life experiences? Yeah. It also seems that the Lord is empowering demons as well, specifically in, mm -hmm. in Kali Yuga. Yeah. Is there it's a reason? Yeah. There's a verse, it's in the seventh canto, It explains when the mode of ignorance is prominent, the yakshas and rakshasas are, are powerful, they're prominent. When the mode of passion is prominent, the demons are in power. And when the mode of goodness is prominent, the demigods are in power. The Lord doesn't. The Lord empowers according to that, that superior mode. Because he sets up the material energy in a certain way and it works. And he doesn't interfere with that. But he always protects his devotee. That's the whole thing. That even though the, the demons right now, you might say, are very prominent in the world. And Prabhupada said that. He said in 1972, he says the demons are increasing and they will continue to increase. Don't worry. Take shelter of Krishna and you'll be protected. And he gave the example of Prahlad being protected by the Lord when he was harassed by his father. Rani Kashipu gave the example of Devaki when she was in the jail cell and how he, how Krishna protected her from her brother Kamsa. So yeah, 
I mean, that's a good question. So the material energy works in that way. And because people are mostly in the modes of passion and ignorance, that's why these, these uh, personalities are, are very influential. Yeah. They're empowered by the material energy, not by Krishna, but by th Krishna through the material energy, like that. He doesn't interfere with that, because he, that's the way he sets up the material energy. Mm -hmm. There's a verse, and if you want to look it up, 7th Canto, 1st chapter, verse number 8, 718, it's easy to remember. And that's explained in that particular verse. Mm -hmm. But uh, as the devotees become more and more, you know, together, working in, in a unified way to spread Krishna consciousness, and the devotees become more and more powerful. We can't do it alone. We have to do it together. This movement means together. Everyone's important. <laughs> Everyone. I made this point that real success is not succeeding, but um, accepting Krishna's arrangement? Something? Depending on him. Can you explain a little bit more how we can be in that mindset throughout our days? Mm -hmm. My dear Lord, I can't do anything, but you can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when it comes to small things day to day, we understand we go through the routine. But even even the small things, sometimes we find ourselves stuck. <laughs> so it's just that our efforts bring about a certain energy based on the nature of that effort and our consciousness. So if we depend on Krishna, then that means we're allowing him to empower us to do whatever we need to do. And so. Pretending to pe depending on Krishna simply means to remember Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's all. Because that's the principle of bhakti, to always remember Krishna, somehow. Yena kena pukarena nama krishna nivesaya. The verse in the in Srimad, bhakti rasamata sindhu says, somehow or other, somehow or other, remember Krishna. And if you can't remember him in a normal way, he'll help you by giving you some trouble, and then you'll remember him. <laughs> so there's nothing inauspicious for a devotee. <laughs> okay, yeah, depending on him, that's what it is. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so we can do a little kirtan. Is that all right? Did everyone have prasadam? No, not yet. Some, some yes, some no. Okay, pretty good. <laughs>